All right, let's now look at transformers in terms of alternating current. Why transformers only work with AC and not DC? Well, if you remember, and we just talked about this briefly in the uh, previous video, is that if we draw a ring here or a coil, an iron core um, ring, and we were to get some, some wire and wrap the wire around both of these ends here, and over here, just like um, Faraday, we put a galvanometer, and over here we put some type of battery, right, a DC battery. Then just like Faraday, we note that when we turn on the battery, there is a change in flux. It's going from zero flux. As soon as we turn on the current, the current goes in one direction. That current creates a magnetic field in this coil. And so we've got a change in flux there from zero to an actual field. That change in flux gets passed on through our core here. We just learnt about that in our transformers introductory video where we get um, some flux linkage between these two. So this iron soft iron core um, transfers the change in flux to the uh, secondary coil. That change in flux induces a um, EMF and consequently a current in the second coil and the needle moves. But the needle moves only transiently and then stops. Because to generate a current, we need a change in flux. And if you remember the law, Faraday's law, he said you needed a change in flux. And that change in flux was magnetic field times A, the area vector of the field. And so we can change, and we can put the cos theta in there if we want to as well. But if we change the magnetic field, we change the flux. If we change the area, we change the flux. If we are rotating it, we're doing an effective area change, changing the flux. And if there is a change in flux, then there is an EMF induced. The problem is, with AC, you, there's only a change in flux when it's turned on or off. Sorry, I'll say that again. With DC, so DC, only change in flux when turned on or off. And that's it, and that's exactly what Faraday saw. So if we were to draw a graph of that, so time, and then we have current, and this would be the graph of the current in the galvanometer there, that with DC it would go up, it would go down, and then zero. So you have an initial production of the current, and then it would turn off. So you have an initial pulse, and that would be it. So, but using AC, however, and AC is constantly changing directions 50 times a second. So in Australia, it's 50 hertz, our AC, right? And so 50 times a second, the current is changing. Because the current is changing direction, it's inducing a magnetic field, and the magnetic field is changing every, um, is changing 50 times a second. So since we've got a changing magnetic field 50 times a second, that's going to create a change in flux which means we're constantly going to be generating an EMF in the second coil, in the first coil, and then of course in the second coil. So our, so our current is going to be constantly changing, going up and down, up and down, up and down. And so that's why transformers use AC, not DC. Now of course, when we're talking about this transformer here, we're relating it to an ideal transformer. And remember we said in a previous video that an ideal transformer is 100% efficient. There is no what we call flux link leakage. It leaks flux. Well, what does that mean? Well, we're going to look at that in a bit more detail in a later video, but remember flux is just the amount of material that passes through a point or an area of space. And if we're creating a magnetic field, and the magnetic field is coming over here um, and around here, then some of this flux is going, to be in, is going to be affecting the coil, but there's going to be part of the flux here that is not in the coil, it's going to be outside the coil in air. And so since it's in air, it's not going to be inducing anything in our, in our um, iron uh, core there, so therefore we have a little bit of flux leakage. But in our ideal transformer, there is no flux leakage, and so therefore 100%, 100% efficient. So let me draw up another transformer scenario, and let's see if we can get this idea about AC um, current and graphing how um, the current or induced voltage might look. All right, let's get that down. Okay, so here we have another scenario here, and we've got a transformer here. Okay, 
we've got the primary coil, we've got the secondary coil, we've got a voltmeter attached to the secondary coil and a voltmeter over the primary coil, and we've got it attached to a DC power source. Okay. So the question is, how would the voltage graphs look over time when we close the circuit? In other words, we turn on the DC power. Right, I've got DV there. DC is what I should have written. There we go. So how will it look? Well, the primary coil just here, you turn on the current and the voltmeter is going to read the potential difference between the two terminals of the battery. And so it's going to go up like that and then down when you disconnect it, right? So you connect it, there's a voltage difference, electrical potential difference between the positive and negative terminals, and that difference is going to be occurring as long as the circuit is complete, and then when you turn the circuit off, it goes down. So that's what the voltage per time graph would look for our primary coil. What about our secondary coil? Well, as soon as you turn it on, it's going to cause um, a flux change to be passed through the coil, so there's going to be a change in flux from zero flux to a flux. That flux is going to induce an EMF in the secondary coil there, and that's going to cause um, a voltage. It's going to decrease like that. But because this is constant voltage here that's being produced by this uh, DC source, there is no change in flux. And so after that initial change in flux has been turned on, this goes down to zero and continues along zero until the point at which you disconnect the circuit. And so when you disconnect the circuit, uh, the, the, the uh, voltage in the primary coil goes down, and then you'll see an opposite voltage spike happening in the secondary coil. So you only get voltage induced in the secondary coil when there is a change in flux, initially turned on and turned off. Okay, so that's why transformers use AC current, not DC current. Hope that makes sense, related to some graphical analysis, and I'll see you in the next video where we start where we keep exploring transformers a little bit more. See you then.